you're losing too much distance relative to your club head speed. I know you said sometimes you're seeing it going farther than what these numbers are, but you're losing too much distance relative to your club head speed. So at 87 miles an hour is pretty good speed, right? So to scale that, let's say I swing my eight iron like 91. Mm -hmm. So pretty close to the same thing. And that's also like warmed up, didn't make a drive, you know, whatever. <laughs> but mine would go like 165. Yeah. And so if your speed is that high, but the carry is that low, either we have a contact issue, meaning like you're hitting it way fat or thin, or we have a dynamic loft issue, which is like the flipping at the bottom adding loft, right? I think we probably have the latter, the so. latter of the two. <laughs> All right, guys, before we dive into today's video, the lesson uh, that we did with Steve, you're gonna see in just a moment. Our Father's Day free-for-all is running from now through Father's Day, June 19th, where you get to try your first lesson completely free. And you also get our bonus bundle of our four most important master classes. You get 14 days to try it out absolutely risk-free. I'm not asking you to buy anything. I just want you to try it because I know that I could really help you with your game. But I understand that you know maybe you're skeptical about online lessons or you haven't done it before. Whatever the case is, I just want to remove the risk. So you can try it. If you like it, great. We work together. We you know, solve your problems, fix your swing pieces when to fix. Or if you don't like it, you pay nothing. No harm, no foul. Again, this is going to go through 619 uh, Father's Day special. We're going to put the link down in the description down below. Hope to see you there. So if we have a priority board for you, that would be high up there. How do you make the same swing, but we get the loft down and hit it much farther? One is you're presenting too much loft at impact, so we're losing distance. Mm -hmm. And two is that the ball is curving too far left, which we know means the club face is too close to the path. If those two things are happening, we should see some things through impact, right, that are causing those. Mm -hmm. So as you start to come down here, mm -hmm. we see the handle being too far back, and we also see excessive rolling arm rotation, which would be like closing of the face. Yep. So if I pull up an example here for us, let's pull up. We're gonna see two things. One is his handle is gonna be more forward at impact, okay. which lowers the dynamic loft, right? Which will make the golf ball go farther relative to your speed. And then the second thing, let's even see if you can see his loft on there. It's not down there. The second thing is you're gonna see less rolling, less closing of the club face, less arm rotation through the hit. So if we pull you up, here and we see you at impact and we pull him at impact yeah now he's now he that, that's an exaggerated example on him where he's got lots of speed but it, just to give you a visual mm -hmm. Look outside his front leg yeah i mean he's exaggerated right right so we probably won't go that far but we would want to go closer to where he is than where we are i would say a good model for you would be to get the hands over the left leg right at impact now, what we're doing right now is just building out, like, where do we want to go? Mm -hmm. So it's like, what's your plan here? Or like, where do we want to go? And then we got to back that up and say, okay, how are we going to get there? Sure. Like, what do we need to do to do this? But that should be when you're looking at your video where you're aspiring to get to. Mm -hmm. However, we decide to do that. Okay. The hands more forward, that would lower the loft. Yep. And then if we start to roll through impact, you see even at this phase, you see the differences there? How far out? Yeah, there's, there's that, several that pieces, right? way out in front. See his arms and club are intact, yep. right? Now look at also notice his wrists here. <clears throat> you notice yours are, like, yeah, exactly. He's so got that, what, the sup supination? Yeah, now you, you have too much of the rolling here. So you, you'll notice here, let's see, give you a better picture. So maybe it's in here. It's baseball. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> too much throwing. Too much throwing. That adds loft and makes the face point to the left. Okay. So you actually have, a, you have too much arm rotation. And there's some work obviously to do there with the leg motion. Yeah. But the, the main thing we want to start with here is the lowering of the loft um, and, then, and, and less of the rolling. Those are kind of our two biggies. Sure. So the wrist, you have a lot of hinge in your wrists. And anytime you add a lot of hinge in your wrist, the wrists are also going to cut. Uh, mm -hmm. So like extend, which is going to have a net effect of opening the club face. So your club face at the top, even if we back you up here, at this point is too open. That club face Got is it. too open. Now, if a club face is too open at the top and you're trying to fix that, and that's because that left wrist is too, um, too cupped for your grip and the right mm -hmm. wrist is too flat. When that's too open at the top, you got to do something to correct it. Correct it. And so that's really the first thing we see here that's like, why would your brain do that throwing during the downswing if the face is open at the top, right? 
So there's the cupping of the lead wrist, face two open. And then as you start to come down, you start to see some of the, you trying to fix that, yeah. right? Which is the hips off the wall, mm -hmm. which is the head off the wall, kind of the early extension, lots of the throwing. And then the shaft's gonna exit too far down the line here. Okay. So like all things equal, when we work through a hit, if we were to, we'll just keep our buddy up there that we like. Mm -hmm. If we were to look from this side and we look at him through the hit, you see him at the top, right? Look mm -hmm. at his club face and look at our club face. See how different that club face looks right there? Yeah. So his is more pointed towards the sky with his left wrist flatter and his right wrist more bent back. Or we have our left wrist two cupped and our right wrist bent back. That would be like thing number one we need to do to get the handle forward and less rolling on the way through okay. it. And there's one thing we need to do, which is your wrist angles, right? Mm -hmm. So that one thing for us should start to fix a bunch of things. We're gonna need to do work to your, your body motions relative right. to the, the ground as well. Uh, but I wanna start to lower the dynamic loft, first things first, get those wrist angles good, get that distance going. So at impact, we said we wanna have your handle more forward. Now, how far forward it should be is I would say inside mm -hmm. of your left thigh. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah, good, you put your right hand on there. So this should be about where you get to at impact, which is hands right. inside your thigh. Yep. Now your hips would be turned a little mm -hmm. bit, but this is really what you want to be able to feel. Mm -hmm. Now what I want you to be able to feel is the correlation between your wrist angles and the shaft length. Mm -hmm. So anytime we move the handle more forward, which would give you more shaft lean, lower the loft, you'd hit the ball more solid and farther, mm -hmm. you sh you're going to feel like your right wrist gets more bent and your left wrist gets more flat. Now that's true at any point in the swing. At any point you do that, that would lower the dynamic loft. Correct. Right? Yep. Now what I'm saying is, well, if we go, let's go up to the top of your backswing, just kind of your normal. So what happens to you normally is you go this way too much, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Now you would be more turned and all that. But this left wrist cups too much. Mm -hmm. This right wrist is too flat and the face is too open. Yeah. So show me flattening your left wrist, flatten your left wrist, there you go. That's what you need to feel like you do to be able to get that club face square. Sure. Does that make sense? Yep. Now, does that feel okay for you wrist-wise? It feels it different. Feels, it but feels not... different, it feels doable. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Let's take your Listen. setup again. So, any time in your swing, we would have the left wrist feeling more flat mm -hmm. and the right wrist, right wrist more bent back sure. to lower the dynamic loft. Now, what I'd like us to do is do it from the takeaway to the top of the backswing. Yeah. So that's what we're gonna rehearse to get your face feeling like it points towards so, the sky. Okay. Well, let's go through how you would do the takeaway to the top with the wrist angles, okay? Okay. So from here through your takeaway, and you could just keep your hands on the club the whole time. Mm -hmm. From here through the takeaway, this should just be kind of normal. You're not really doing anything different. Yep. Just a stock takeaway. But from here to the top now, from zero to 100 progressively, you need to feel as though you're bowing the left wrist yep. and feel as though you're bending this back to the top. Okay. So let's start the process of feeling what that feels like. You can let that right arm fold. Good. So that's what that's gonna feel like. Now you would normally right. be turned a little more. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So now what that's gonna do is make your club face point more towards the sky. Does that make sense? Yep. When you cup it, the logo points towards you, the face right. gets open. And if I, so if I bring that down, that's no shaft lean. Yeah. If we go like this, and now bow it, give me the good way, and I bring that down, that's shaft lean. See how far mm -hmm. the club is behind your hands. Mm -hmm. So what, we're, what that does is not only is it gonna close your club face more, it's also gonna have that club head behind your hands. Remember I showed you your yep, swing? Yep. Yeah, so that's also gonna help us get to more there. Right. Now, you need to feel as though you're like Dustin Johnson <laughs> just to get to normal, right. right? Now, to Dustin Johnson, that feels normal. Normal. For you and me, that'd feel like, holy cow. Right. But that's because you're doing this too much. So you have no choice. Right. We have to feel exaggerated. Right. And all we're looking to do is get it flat. Just get the stock. Right. But it, we must overdo this to get to normal. Makes sense. What would happen if you overdid that and actually got your left wrist too bowed and your right wrist too bent back? You would really lower the loft, you'd hit it a country mile. Yeah. Right? Dustin yeah. Johnson hits it far or short. <laughs> right. Hits it far, right? Yeah. So there's not a lot of risk of overdoing that. That's true. Yeah. When's the last time you saw someone you're like, man, your wrist was too bowed? Never. No, they're probably on tour. Right. right? Exactly. Now, there's timing elements to it, there's other pieces to it. Yeah. But I say that to say when you leave here today mm -hmm. and you're doing this and playing, there's very little risk at me just putting money in the stock market every month, every year, <laughs> right? Over time, yeah. very little risk. Right. 
there's very little risk in you just incrementally doing more and more and more and more and more from when you go there to the top. Now you can do it more than that. Yeah, exactly. Because you're going to basically crank it that way as much as you can. Yeah. What's going to happen is we're going to play this game where I'm going to say exaggerate as much as you can. You're going to do it. You're not going to do it enough. I know. And I'm going to say do it more, and we're just going to keep doing that. Yeah. And that's the only way to do it. Right. And then what we need to feel is, okay, well, here's what I feel. I feel my left wrist. I feel my right wrist. I feel the glove logo pointing here. Whatever. It could be a million feels. But we have to look at the top and see where those wrist angles are. Right. That is your most important piece to lower the dynamic law. Okay. So we're going to go on swing number one. You go up to the top. Feel the left wrist bowing, right wrist bent back. Mm -hmm. reset and now on the second one I'm gonna feel the same thing but I'm gonna swing down at like 20% speed so I just felt it at rehearsal now I'm going up feel it swing through okay so one just to the top the second one with the swing down no golf ball okay that should feel exaggerated it should feel probably like the face is gonna be quite closed compared to normal yeah All right. so swing number one pause at the top and then just hold it there for a second so I can confirm Excellent job, reset. Swing number two, you can swing down from there, 20% speed. Excellent, let's do that again. Swing number one, just to the top. A Little bit more with the left wrist, there you go. Bring her down. Now you can swing through. Awesome. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but you're just gonna clip this little T. So swing number one, just to the top with a pause. Swing number two, you're going to swing down, same 20%, but now you're just going to clip a T. boy, beautiful. Same thing, just clip that T, just 20% speed's good. Awesome. Okay, one more, just clipping the T. This potentially, I don't want to jinx us, See how many balls it takes. <laughs> but this could be a really good before and after in like a swing or two. A little more. That a boy. Uh, yep. Good. Up to the top. Bow the left wrist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Beautiful. Okay, now we're going to hit with that. Well, in fact, let's do this because I want to ramp up the speed a little. Give me the same procedure, just one more. Then we'll put a ball in. Okay. Uh, where you, you can go full speed now, but still pause at the top. So first one, pause, pause, reset. Second one, go through, but go full speed. Right. It would be very difficult to blow your wrist too much. Okay. So you can like crank that thing pretty good here on day one. So let's get that left wrist bowed to the top, right wrist bent back. That a boy, beautiful job. Now you're gonna go full, full speed on the way through. Cool. Now, when you hit this ball, I'm telling you before you go, you are not gonna do it enough, right? So what I want you to do is get as close as possible. So I, I'm gonna serve that up as like a little challenge to you. Okay. To like, show me you doing it. Where like, I'm gonna do this so much, there's no way my wrist won't be both. And then it'll be like 75% of the way there, right? <laughs> yeah. And then what we're trying to find is like, at what speed do we need to train this first? Okay, sure. so let's just, let's try some full speed. Okay. And then we'll see, we might have to take a little weight off the bar, right, and slow it yeah. down a little bit. Okay. So we're gonna hit this ball. Your goal is from the takeaway to the top to bow this as much as possible, bend this back as much as possible, mm -hmm. and hit, right? Okay. And then we'll look at it and then we'll adjust. Take away to the top. Cool. Now when we're looking at this here, we're gonna have two pieces of feedback. <laughs> and now we just see how long it takes. It might take us two swings, it might take us 2,000 or somewhere in between. What we're going to look at, and obviously not this because you miss hit it, which is fine. But what you're going to look at when you give yourself feedback when you go practice is you, sh you should give yourself ball flight feedback right away. Yeah. Dynamic loft, total distance are the two things we're looking for. Dynamic okay. loft, total distance. So we're going to see those change as we go. And then, and then we're going to look on the left side at the top of your backswing. So what we want to see from here is the left wrist being more bowed. Okay. <laughs> Now, let's look at that compared to our normal. Now, your swing length is long, yes. but the question mark is, hey, where is that left wrist compared to normal? And I would say that's about halfway different compared, compared to our normal. There's your normal, yeah. right? So the left wrist and the club face. See if we can see it kind of right there where the club face is at. So that club face and wrist are too open. Mm -hmm. Now, if we get you at that same length to swing, 
we can start to see a little difference in that club face. Would you agree? Absolutely. So now that left wrist is more flat and that club face is where it should be, which is on a 45. Now the swing length is a secondary is a different conversation, right? But that wrist and that club face from there. So you did a great job. In fact, that's almost 10 out of 10. But you see that amount of bowing led to what? Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. I, I wouldn't mind if my swing just stopped right there though. Oh, for sure. No, it's <laughs> definitely know? long. But you, you could go long and get the club face good and we could get part number one, which is you should gain like 20 yards. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then we can make it more efficient for sure. Less swaying, yeah. right, less of that. And let's hit with that same feel. Ooh, that should be pretty good. Check this out here. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now we're talking. Right. So now that left wrist is actually slightly bowed, slightly flexed. Yeah. Which, if I took a picture of you at this part of your swing, and we didn't look at anything else. <laughs> you could be like, this guy could shoot whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. He shoots 65, right? So beautiful, dude. Let's keep, let's do a couple more reps with that same thing. A little more, good. Let's hit with that same feel. Part <clears throat> one of this is to get this top of backswing position Part two is going to be the delivery. So, dude, beautiful job from there. Left wrist is perfectly flat. Mm -hmm. Club face is more pointed up towards the sky. Absolutely excellent. Now, when you start to come down and through, we need to do a better job with that. Right. Which is why the dynamic loss is so high. But part one is to start to take away the reasons why your brain did it in the first place. The hardest way to change a swing is to not remove the root cause that's causing it. Effectively, that's no swing change, right? <laughs> yeah. So if you were to keep your top with the wrist angles, the club face open, and just try and shove your hands forward, you'd hit the ball a mile to the right. Mm -hmm. So your brain would never let you do it. That's why it's always going to throw and flip. So phase one is change the reason you're doing it, which is this. Phase two is change it directly, yeah. which is the downswing part. Yeah. So give me like one or two more with just this. Okay. Then let's talk about how, how would we get through the ball. Okay. Yeah.